Hi, everybody. I'm Ronnie Walter, and I'm here with the delightful licensed artist, Martha Collins, who is going to talk to us today about her career, about making a living as an artist, and who knows what else she's going to tell us about because she is uber delightful. So why don't we get started? I want Martha to tell us in her own words kind of what this is about. Tell us a little bit about your background and how you got started. I got started um, as an illustrator. I graduated from college in illustration. I went to Art Center in Cal State Long Beach and I started, I became a commercial illustrator, watercolor primarily, and my clients were national and I did that for about 10, 12 years. I had you, two rat. You worked for a, for a studio or you were freelance? freelance. That's a good oh, okay. question. I was freelance and I had my own studio. I shared with a designer. And um, so I had a rep on the West Coast, a rep on the East Coast, and I was doing pretty well, feeling really good. Finally clawed my way up to the, you know, to a decent level. And then my rep told me, um, watercolor is dead. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> because that was when digital came in. Oh, by the all, way, watercolor is dead. Yeah. yeah, watercolor's dead, so so are you. And so Lene Washburn was working at Marcel Sherman, and I was doing greeting cards with them once in a while, and she suggested that I come to the National. Excuse me. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. I got to turn this off. It's my brother. <laughs> I thought I had it silenced. I'm so sorry, you guys. Well, so now I'm going to silence mine, but go ahead. I just turned mine off. There you go. <laughs> anyway, Lene suggested that I come to New York to the Surtex show and find out about art licensing. I knew nothing, never heard of it, nothing. So I meet, I stayed, I learned. I went for probably 10, maybe eight to 10 shows before I ever was, uh, got a booth. And I started doing booths and I did that for oh. probably, I started doing, yeah, maybe it wasn't that long, but we would just make a, trek of it every year and uh so anyway that got me into art licensing and being from illustration i couldn't believe art licensing you know i couldn't believe how much work we had to do oh my god anyway so but i liked it work on the front end yeah on the front end exactly i mean all of my assignments were assignments and i got you know half up front and the end you know all that stuff in any case so I've been in it ever since and um, I started out in almost all paper because in those days everything was paper. There were many more companies as other artists that you've interviewed have said. So I did a lot of tabletop. I did a paper tabletop. Right. I did a lot of bags and wrap, stationary cards, all of that stuff. And then about mm, maybe seven years ago, I could see that that, or maybe even more, I can't remember, you might remember when paper started going away and I decided I had to get in a gift and I don't know anything about gifts, so I started going to the Atlanta show. Right. And, and for Atlanta those that don't know what the Atlanta show is, that is the big gift market. When we talk about the Atlanta show, it's America's Mart, if you wanted to look that up. And that's the, it's, it's, it's basically the wholesale market for retailers to come and buy gifts but a lot of artists go there to meet with manufacturers. And so a lot of artists go there. It's not as easy to get in as it used to be, but that's where we go and have meetings to people that don't do stationery or uh, other things that, you know, other places that we have met them. So Atlanta, when we talk about Atlanta, that's what we're talking about. So go ahead. Thanks, Ronnie. Thanks. <laughs> I take it for granted. Everybody knows. Right. So, um, and then I started doing gift and, um, and that's where I met most of my clients. Um, also from Surtex, the holdover from Surtex. And I did stop going to Surtex about a year before everybody else stopped because I could see where that show was going. Right, right. For me, for me. And I didn't right. meet at that time. But so I go to Atlanta to, for meetings and to source out new manufacturers. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's basically my background. And ask me something else. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you go to Atlanta, I mean, yeah, that is a great place to meet with your current manufacturers, see if you can make connections with new people. Do you also find that to be a place to spot trends? 
That's theoretically, yeah. But, you know, often you don't really see very many trends. You know, there's even your husband, Jim, would write about what he'd seen, you know, and llamas, you know, I mean, all of that. But not particularly. Well, what everybody needs to know is Martha is setting trends. Martha is setting oh, well, I mean, me. honestly, her work <laughs> is just the cream of the crop when it comes to um, her skill level and uh, vision and, and voice is so clear in what she does. So it's really amazing. I find that too, as far as people go, well, I want to go see the trends. Well, what you're seeing is what was the trend a year ago because right. it's all manufactured now. And you know, sometimes you can see an arc of things that are happening, but, and if you can meet it, it might be interesting, but sometimes things are already done by the time you see it, even at the wholesale level. Well, I mean, this, this is just me because I don't, my stuff isn't trendy really. Right. It's, um, I, I'm aware of trends. If I see them, I w I'm aware of what's out there because that's why I go to that show. But, um, you know, the, t the only time, well, in the olden days, it seems like trends were a bigger deal. Um, you know, the color of the year is peach. You know, the color of the year is blue, you know, Pantone. That's a trend, and that counts because our clients are paying attention to those. Right, details. right. So it's not like I don't pay attention right. um, and tailor my stuff towards that. And I, you know, I look at retail stores like Anthropology, and, you know, but... Um, the only time that trends really affected me was 15, 20 years ago when I went to Heimtech in, in Germany. Mm -hmm. And I was seeing trends that were going to um, show up in our market in the United States three years later. Right. And at the time, I was doing a lot of tabletop paper, and I was getting into Target all the time. And Target, of course, at that time was totally on trend. And they were ahead of the, of the curve. So when I came back from Heimtech, I just designed all of these, these, I made a bunch of designs based on what I saw there and got them into Target. Um, and that mattered, but yeah. I don't know that it does that well, much. I think the trends have gotten, I mean, first of all, they're a lot shorter on the market than they used to be. Yeah. And yeah. because of the internet and because we're all seeing the same thing at the same time, those things pass by, everybody's seeing it at the same time. I remember a long time ago, I worked for a large department store and we had these trend managers, which I always thought this is yeah. the greatest job ever because they yeah. pretty much be sitting on a park bench in Milan going, hmm, it <laughs> sucks, you know? Yeah. And so, and then, and there was an absolute pattern. It would go, you know, Milan to London, and it would be like Milan, Paris, London, New York, bounce over to LA and then yeah. swing back through the right. Twin Cities where I was. And so there was yeah, a different right. pattern. Now it all blows up at the same time. So that's it. Maybe that's, maybe that's it. Maybe it's that we're, we're seeing them all so easily, but you get bombarded. You know, I can get bombarded easily. I'm sure other people do, other artists do too. If I see too much, I, oh, I'm, I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. I, yeah. Should I do this? Should I do that? You know? Well, so, and that's why I think that having a very solid base of what your, where your skill set is yeah. and not veering too far out of that, except as you explore as an artist, but when you are bringing out good work, that's basically in the realm of what people buy, you know, we never know yeah. what that shift is going to be, but yeah. you know, there is that midpoint where we kind of know what, what our people are responding to. That you can't, you just can't chase those trends. And if you are, and if you are a trend chaser and you're really good at it, yay you! Oh. But you have to be moving really quickly. You have to be moving really quickly. And the and the, the one one of the many valuable things I've learned being in this business as long as I have, which is a long time, <laughs> is is <laughs> oh, um, everything changes. Everything changes, you know, I know, I don't mean to sound like I'm somebody or anything, but I, I think I told you, Ronnie, earlier, um, I, when I went to Art Biz Jam this last year, um, I, I, people said things to me that made me, that, that made me under, see and realize that they think of me as like this big time artist, I'm, you know, okay? Well, we all know when we're sitting in the studio banging stuff out and hoping to God somebody's gonna license it, you don't have, you're not in that mindset at all, right? No. 
And I am not any, I hate to tell everybody this, but I'm not any different than anybody else. I'm only as good as the last thing I did. You know, that is so true. And you know, every day, no matter where you are on this pathway, it's yeah. always a blank piece of paper yeah. and a paintbrush full of paint or yep. a stylus. Whatever that is, it's always a new beginning. And you know, that is, I think that's really, really um, insightful that, that, I mean, that is true. And, and nobody sits around and says, I am so incredible. The next thing I do is going to be more incredible because I'm so incredible. No, we all are like, oh, hope this works. I, you know, I, I read something about Meryl Streep who said that as soon as she finishes a movie and goes back home, she, she whines to her husband that she's never going to get another job. Right. And I thought, ah, yeah. I'm in good company. And if it's good enough for Meryl Streep, it's good enough for yeah. us. So, so when, no. when you went from being, you know, more on the editorial side and having assignments given to you, which is a right. beautiful, beautiful system, um, and then you flip to licensing. How long would you say it took that you find that you said, I think I can do this. I think I can make a viable living at this. Was there a gap there for you? I still had some illustration and um, I teach. I've been teaching one class a semester for 30 years. Wow. And so that, that was some income, which, you know, a little bit of income. Stay the basics. I believe in putting money towards my business. So I even had a studio outside the house because I had two young sons when I was doing this. Mm -hmm. And so I made the sacrifices to be able to get to that position. And then in my mind, when I, I, I just, my friend gave me a t-shirt that said, refuse to fail. And I was afraid, of course, but I just decided I'm not going to fail. I can't right. fail. Right. So, you know, there were years when I didn't make very much money, um, but I never considered doing anything else ever. Even when, you know, money was really tight, um, I never considered it. Even when my mother, meaning well, would say, you know, maybe you need to do something else. I didn't consider it. <laughs> I just didn't. Right. Well, you know, and I went through that too, where I was, when I went from a job and I went from, uh, I was very, well, I always say I wasn't lucky. I, I did stuff to put yeah. things in front of me, yeah. but I, I was working like a dog after I left my last, last job. Right. And I was doing curriculum work where it was like, draw a ball, 15 bucks, 15 bucks. I mean, I was making $15 <laughs> per line drawing and man, I could crank those $15, a, you know, I don't know how much yeah. I was making a day, but I was like Bob Cratchit, you know, I'm going <laughs> to draw as many of these as possible. And yeah. then as my, because I started licensing my work, but that was this big payoff. It was going to happen in months or a year. So I had to keep, you know, you know, doing all of that other stuff to do that. And I also had a very lovely, well-meaning mother and sister who would say gingerly, do you think it's time you got a job? I'm like, no, I'm so close. I'm so close. But I had gotten to the point where I thought, I am very close. I know this is going to work, but yeah, I got to pay this mortgage and figure out what I'm going to drive tomorrow and all of that stuff or eat. And I decided I was going to get a night waitress job because I thought, yeah. well, then I can yeah. be available to my clients and I'm going to, who cares? I don't care. I was going to get a night waitress job. Uh, you know, I'm not going to run into my clients in the podunk town I was living in. And so I was like, I'll get a waitress job. And it was right when I sort of made that decision when things started to work now timing or I just let my brain go, honey, this is going to work or angels. I don't know. All I know is right. I didn't get the waitress job, but I was, I was this close. And then things started oh, to turn around. Well, and being in this field, my God, my, my career does, you know, it, it does this, you know, I'm get I'm doing all these national account paintings for American Express and Disney and Knott's Berry right. Farm and all these people and watercolor today. You know, yeah, watercolor's dead, well, honey, watercolor's dead. You know, yeah, I yeah. <laughs> you know, but, but you yeah. know, and that's the thing, you, uh, you are a master. If, if uh, you, all of you need to uh, immediately go to Instagram after you've finished watching this, watch the whole thing because it's delightful. Get to Instagram and start looking at what Martha's doing because you're, you have such a loose, beautiful hand. And you know, a lot of that comes from time. You know, that you just, you know, you don't get to 
you don't you don't get to that place without lots and lots of paper in the in the basket and doing it over and over and over. But her work is really stunning. Thank so you. Thank look you. at it. Well, yeah. one of the things that um, came about when I was an illustrator, I would do type pencils and I would fill them in. You know, like. I did preliminary drawings. Now I, I do almost none. I, and the reason was that I went back and got my master's um, 15 years ago. Um, and I decided that I wasn't going to do any drawing. It was all going to be spontaneous. Whatever I was going to do, which drove my committee crazy because they knew I could draw. Right. But I wanted to, to, to explore not having control. And so when I, and, and that spilled over then into my illustration, it's not illustrations, it is, but I mean, I'll, I like to just start painting. Um, if I'm sketching a little bit, maybe, but that's it. And then it, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, I just throw it on the floor and do another one and another one and another one. And um, that's just my temperament. Right. It's, I don't like the noodle. I, in fact, I'd rather be shot at sunrise than that. <laughs> Although it isn't, the, it's just that's the way I like. To. So delightful! I love seeing your like your sketches from the airport, or yeah, uh, I love it when you sketch your students' drawings. I mean, I love that. So tell me what, like, what was the impetus of getting the masters? Was it for oh, uh, exploration or professional? What was that about? No, I was, I, I became, they asked me to start teaching two years after I got my undergrad, but partly that was because I was 10 years older than the other students and also because I had already worked as a right. So I had business background, right? right. And um, anyway, I started teaching and then at some point the head of the department said, Mark, and I, oh, I started my students were talking about this class they were taking from this wonderful painting, the oil painting teacher. And I decided I'm gonna go take a class. I'm gonna come back to school. So I'm teaching and some of my students were in the class and now I'm a student with them. And then my department chair said, well, if you're gonna go back to school, then get a master's, you know? Yeah. And um, cause he wanted me to teach full time. Right. And um, so I, I did, and I had no idea it was going to be that hard. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> How hard was getting a master's be? It was hard. It was really hard for me. Um, oh, very hard. Yeah. Because I was also juggling my, my, I had my studio and my work and my teaching. Right. Um, but in any case, it was the best thing. And then when I got out, I decided I don't want to be a full-time teacher. <laughs> I want my career. I want, you know, now I'm probably going to regret that when I retire. Well, I'm never going to retire. You can't retire, but I'm not going to be able to either because I won't have a retirement like, you know, the regular one, like if I'd taken a full-time job. But I'm very lucky that I have been able to stay at school, which I love, academia. I love the students. I love teaching. It makes me, Aww. makes me um, work as, Changes the way I work. I, when I preach to them, I come home and I start noodling or, or trying to save some god off the painting I'm working on and go, really, Martha? Really? You're beating us to death and you just spent, you know, an hour talking to your students about that? Right. So it keeps me young. It keeps me into the game. And, um, and they're, just, they're just wonderful. I love it. And it oh, gets me out of my right. studio. Gets me out of my studio, too. Right. Right. Yeah, that can get a little small. Yeah. Um, so... What tips do you have? Like, what three things would you tell somebody that wants to do what you're doing? What what tips would you give them right now? That they're starting out. Well, yeah. one of the questions I originally was, "What would you change starting out?" And I said, no, "Nothing," because when you're starting out, you don't know anything. That um, is true. Do all the research. Get to know this business, and there is plenty of information on the art of licensing. Um, there are there are resources, Grani and. Ronnie teaches it, you know, she can counsel. There's, there's a lot of resources out there. You have the whole internet. Uh, don't come on to the art of licensing and say, can somebody tell me where I can find some card manufacturers? Because nobody's going to tell you. Right. Because everybody had to learn that the hard way, you know? Yeah. Plus, and, and when Martha refers to the art of licensing, that's a Facebook group. Oh, sorry. It's also sorry. on LinkedIn. That's okay. But it, it's, it's a very vibrant group on yeah. both LinkedIn and um, uh, Facebook, but there's a lot of resources there. And you know, that's one of those. And we know this, but you should read a lot that's on there before you ask 
a question because it may already have been answered. And most people are quite generous, but yeah. You, yeah, you they are. They know, are. You should know some of that before you go on there. And the truth of the matter is that when we were all starting out, when I was starting out, there were five, six times as many companies in all fields, in all product categories. That right. There was more than enough business for everybody, right? So we, you know, there's a cadre of my peers that, you know, we all would call each other and go, even at Surtex, after you'd have a meeting, you'd run over to the, somebody else and go, hey, do you work for these guys? And what, yeah, are they work? dirt balls? <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, you know, so we would share information, which we still do. We still right. do it. That's why, that's why we're doing this, and that's why, you know, our license, I mean, um, the, the Art Biz Gym was about that. And so, I mean, I'm all for sharing information. But you, I turned that phone off, and it's ringing. <laughs> mm, sorry, guys. Uh, it's, it's probably just now a it's still, now call. it. There are there are fewer, so there's it's leaner, and so people will try to help you where they can, but they're not going to uh, give you their sources. It's just that's the hard one. So that's one. Uh, be tenacious. Tell my students there's almost nothing. You have to be talented. If you don't have talent, now this is my teacher speaking. So right. go for it. Other people think I'm full of myself, but this is just because I'm in my teacher mode and. and the, if you're not working really hard and you're not very talented, you're probably not going to have much of a chance. And how does but, a person find out if they're talented? It, well, first they have to develop a portfolio and right. then they have to get it seen. Okay. And talent is all over the place, but we're talking about talent for specifically the art of licensing. So right. you got to know what's out there. And um, I mean, all you have to do is show your portfolio to lots and lots of places. And if absolutely nobody is interested, then don't quit yet. Keep going and going and going and improving, improving, improving. But over the course of, I don't know how many years you can go without any income, but right. then, you know. Well, and if you keep hearing, I, I, I'm a firm believer is when, I mean, because the proof is in what other people's opinions are. That's just the way it is. The people that can actually write the checks. Those are the opinions, if you want to do this for money, that matter. And, and you should always listen very carefully to the things that they are saying to you. And if you hear a common theme throughout, you either, you should A, pay attention, and B, if you can retool something that you don't get that objection anymore, right. then you, you should do that. If you don't, if you don't if, agree with all of those people, then this is the situation you're going to find yourself in that nobody's going to license your work or nobody you're, right. you're not going to move to the next level because right. but you need to seriously listen to what people are saying to you and see if you can find and you know sometimes you can ask them if they've just rejected you depending on the situation of course yes. um, because i've been in that situation where like no tell me more tell me more and you're like ah you know particularly if you're at a trade show or something but you know you can say can you be a little more detailed about why my work isn't right for you, and then you can get that back a little bit too. And so you can I, try to formulate the reasons why. I'm huge about getting asking questions. You know, get get as many answers as you can. Ask, go back, take it to heart, figure out what you know, what you can change, what you can do. Um, that's you know, it's 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 challenging, and and I think you know, I see my my work from. 18 years ago when I started in this, it was all over the place on product. It's terrible. <laughs> I wouldn't get licensed now. Oh, I know. There's there, that lots of things are cringeworthy. But, no, you know, but on like, the other hand, you see, oh, yeah, no, you did see I like a, a video from 1996, and I'm like, why did we think we were so cute? You know, why did we think we're so cute? It's the same with your artwork. You'll go, why did I think that was cute? Okay, I have... Okay, I don't want to cut you off from any other tips if you had. Well, I do have, I, okay, I, I, I took your, you know, so here we go. Um, my main job, I just wrote these out, okay? So go, go for it. Uh, what would you have wanted to know before you started was the question. And then I, I said, my main job is to help my clients make money so that I can make money. It is about making money. It's a business and it's not personal. Right. So what you've got to remember when you show your work, if you don't hear from them, there are so many reasons you may not hear from them, other than the fact that they think your work is terrible. Right. You know, it's not yeah, there's that. There's lots of reasons. Your work could be fabulous and you're still not going to And it's just not what they're looking for right now, right? Yeah. And it isn't personal. So 
when you treat, separate your ego from your personality, no, your ego from your business as much as you can, don't whine and tell people what you can't do, tell them what you will do. I tell my students that too, and myself. They don't wanna know, all, all your client wants to know is what can you do for us? Right. And they need to know you're confident in what you're doing because they're taking a risk on you and you know they're answerable to their bosses. So everybody's a little, you know, work, you know, not worried. I mean, they're they're all on the line. Mm -hmm. So you're in it with them. You're you're a team member. That's the way I look at it. Right. I want them to succeed because I want to succeed. I want them to make money because I want to make money. Right. So let's see what else. Um, mm, mm, mm. Oh, never burn your bridges. Oh, oh no. And, and let me no. tell you, when I was no. young, I only just conquered this about maybe 10 years or 12 years ago, maybe a little longer, my temper. And so Ooh. I would be in my studio, in my little, my, little, my little studio, and the graphic designer was sharing space with me. But so she'd hear my conversations with my reps at the time, you know, and, or anybody else, you know, and, and it was like, um, you, you just, I'd tell my rep, you know, they said, what about my pencil? They don't like, you know, well, you can just tell them, all right, I'm walking away from this job. I would just lose my temper and then she, I'd hang up and then she'd come into my office and say, you call that her back and you tell her, you, you take that all back. And so I learned, I learned to be a team player and learned not to make it, uh, not to burn my bridges. You burn, a, what happens is you work with somebody, if you burn that bridge, they go to another company. Oh, uh, all the time. You, you got no prayer working with the first company, and now you got no prayer working with the second. Right, right. So don't burn your bridges. And you do not want to be known as that difficult artist. You get, oh. it's sort of like you earn being difficult. Like if you come into the business and because you have a, you know, like a multi-million dollar selling book, you get a little more play on that. But who Not too much. Those, not too much because nobody wants to work with you. Nobody well, you can't you. blame them. So you don't have to be a pushover. But you also have to be part of that team. You are the team. You are it's, the and, it's, you know? and, and, I, and I go back to fake confidence if you have to till you have it, right? When you're talking to people you want to work with, position yourself the, in the best possible light. Right. Because uh, that, that counts too. Don't be timid, even if you are. I mean, don't be me. <laughs> <laughs> I have, when, it, when, we, when we artists were first starting to be asked to do production work, you know, prepare your art for printing, you know, now we're, not, we're no longer just taking your designs. You're going to have to put it in that case. I remember it was a, a plate, paper plate, you know, a table, tabletop company. And um, I was livid in there about it because I thought it was completely ridiculous to expect artists to be good enough at art production, you know, preparing your art for printing, then you're, you're risking your own products being wrong, right? And so one of the, um, she's now a rep, and she probably is going to watch this and know who I'm talking about, but she, uh, she came in, sat down for a meeting at my booth at Surtex, and I just rammed her about it, you know, speaking for all of my colleagues. Right, This right. is the worst possible, you know, and who do you think you are, and, and all that. My sister comes, and she works with me at these shows, and she's kicking me under the chair, you know, just indulging myself all over the place. Anyway, I digress. Well, so how did it end up? Did it, what did the what did your client? Oh, how did it end up? Um, yeah. I, I compromised. I don't remember now exactly how it was. I did do more than I thought I should be doing because that was just a friend, and it's like I don't like this at all, and it's not fair. But who? Not, what is fair? And then. I, 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 so somewhere in the middle is what I did. Right. And um, I think somewhere in the middle is usually where that lands. And, you know, truly, again, that's that situation where you ha have ever, you know, like, like, we don't want to be horrible to work with, but you can push back and say, you know what, that's not really my skill set. You know, I'm an illustrator. Is there a way that we can find that you can get the best product because I'm going to go, you know, I'm just not going to do it very well because I don't know how to do that. And you can't incur costs to hire somebody to do that on the front end or whatever, because you'll never make the money back. 
But I mean, that is an issue, but that is something to have a conversation with. You don't just accept everything. You can just no. say, I need to talk to you about that because I don't know if I'm going to do that right. And yeah, no, I, that, I, uh, that is totally within you, with anything you're doing in life to just say, mm, can we talk about that? Because you can always talk about something and it may not all come back to the way you want it, but you can, everybody can feel comfortable because they want the right product as well. And they don't want you gumming it all up because you don't know what you're doing. Right. Right. I agree. The art. I agree. I yeah. agree. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. Uh, don't, ne <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going back to my brilliant <laughs> answers here. One of the reasons that, you know, I just remembered one of the biggest reasons I went back to get my master's is because I didn't have a computer. And that was when everybody, the computers were just coming in. I don't know, maybe they'd already been. And now they'd already been around for a while. So I used my master's time. I got an MFA to learn a computer. That was the way I was able to do it, which was wonderful. Um, and so now, every once in a while, I'll see somebody on their art licensing come on and ask a question. And even with my students, who they're mostly animation students and illustration students, uh, but I tell them, and I tell, I would suggest strongly that you must have decent enough Photoshop skills. You need to be able to know how to take your artwork, scan it. You need to know, you know, the perimeters of that, you know, what DPI, what size, all of that. You need to know all of those things. You need to be able to bring them in, color correct them. You need to learn all the color corrections so that if your client says, can you make the navy blue green, you can say, oh yeah, no problem. So you must have Photoshop skills. You must. You must. You must. They don't have to be. I mean, you don't have to create the artwork in no, Photoshop. No. You don't have to. You know, some people are very skilled at that. No. Do you? You have to have basic skills. You don't have to be a genius at it. I always say that if Photoshop was a ten dollar bill, I'd know about a buck twenty nine. But really, <laughs> if I knew a buck fifty, I'd still be fine. But I've done. I I I can do what I need to do because it's so complex. But don't feel like that's a barrier to you but you have to have some you don't have to know everything in order to be successful on that end yeah and and the only the other thing is that um i did learn i taught myself and this was i better not use that word it was difficult my sister will kill me <laughs> and ginger will kill me um okay so uh let's see what was i going to say oh i learned painter so Corel Corel painter and i've learned to paint in Corel painter, so I have this painterly style and my watercolor. That's basically and drawing sometimes. Um, I think that recently I did a club Paris collection for paper products, and so that's a combination of paint and what and drawing. And uh, but I did develop that because first of all I knew nobody else could do it in my field, mm -hmm. and no, I don't see anybody else still doing it. And um, thank God. And so, and it's fast and it's forgiving and it can be, I can add, you know, we, oh, we, you know, you did this art in the form of a napkin or square or wall art or something, but we want it as a rectangle. Oh yeah, okay, fine. I bring it into painter and I can paint. That's different with watercolor. That's right. That's, there's a whole nother game to doing that when you're painting with watercolor. So, right, right. Wow. Hey, I would like to, because I want to keep this a little tight. I have some, what I'm calling caffeinated questions. Are you ready for some fast caffeinated questions? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and if you don't want to answer it or you don't have a quick answer, that's fine too. I have them on card. Okay. What are you reading right now? Oh God, I've got like three books. Um, Every artist I know Cersei, is reading three books. Cersei, I don't know the the authors aren't good. Circe, Ghost Boy. Um, I just finished Lincoln on the Lincoln and the Bardo. Um, Gentleman from Moscow. But there is something I just started last night, and I yesterday I was going. For, I walk like three to four miles a day because I gained five pounds over the. <laughs> over the <laughs> yeah, that's another story. But um, and, uh, what is the name? I forgot what her Hannah somebody. She wrote the Nightingale, the Physical and Physical Sisters. Oh right. So you read? Yeah, I love reading. I'm a big reader. Yeah, good, good. I think that's very important. Um, what do you do when you feel blocked? Like if you're like, I can't think of anything new, or you're thinking about a new collection, how do you get unblocked? 
<laughs> Usually I call Lene Washburn and go, well, I suck. I'm terrible. I'm never going to get another job. I've got, you know, and she'll say, get out of your studio. Get away. Don't try to do anything. Go look at what is out in the, in the market, you know. Go paint like you like to. She did this recently last year. She said, take the, it was Labor Day weekend or something, and I was just, Ugh. So she said, I want you to take your watercolors and go out and paint for three days. Oh, so I wow. did. She's good that way. Lene is the, you know, she's guided me and kept me on track so many times in my, my life, and, and my sister too, but it, Lene for this more. And so well, I do. Let's interrupt for a second. That, that idea that it's Labor Day weekend, but we still feel like, oh my God, I got to get some work done. I always feel like I have to get work done. I know. I, I always feel like I, I have to get work done. Yeah. So, and now, um, just to speak really quickly to this, a bunch of the artists, Lori Siebert started it or not, I don't know, August Ren, and I don't know, all these wonderful artists started doing this 100 day challenge. And I, and I do feel sort of like I've got to change things up right now. I just feel it. So I asked myself, so, you know, sometimes your confidence goes down and then you say to yourself, wait a minute, you've been here so many times. What do you do? You do work. You, you still create work, but I want to change myself a little bit the way I work like I did in my master's. So I've started this hundred day and it's in a, in a sketchbook and I'm trying to learn to paint from memory because yes, my skills are really good and I can, you know, I can paint things realistically and draw things realistically. Uh, but I, I want to, I just want to change myself up. So this is what I'm allowing, allowing myself to do. Well, you know, I, I mean, I want to do a whole coffee with Ronnie on hundred days project. Cause I think they are, they can be really valuable <sighs> on, on many levels. Okay. Uh, coffee or tea? Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What is one art supply you can't live without? Not a computer. Oh God. That I couldn't live without? Probably my my sketchbook and pens. Wow. Cool. And my gouache. I for sure you were gonna say watercolor, but you know, it all Well I'm not, well, I mean, yeah. well in my head when you asked yeah. that, I was thinking I, I must be traveling. I must be uh -huh out of the studio so i'm thinking okay my sketchbooks like when i've drawn it in the airport but my watercolors too yeah right. in a sketchbook you know something not not you know not carton something big and around you have a favorite sketchbook heck no i've got a million I know, so and then i and i buy them oh i just got one of my students um is has interned and will be interning again at pixar over the summer wow. and she came to my class and she had these really cool sketchbooks and they were stamped with the logo of Pixar. So I said, give me one. And so she one. did, she brought me three. So I like those, but you know, they're all different for different reasons. So cool. I yeah, used to work. You gotta have our sketchbook. Oh, I have so many. <laughs> I don't like, you know, people use those bound ones. Those, I forget what they're called. They're really fancy with a cloth cover. I like a cheap one and I like one with a micro perf because sometimes I'm just going to take a note in it. So I like to be able to tear them out and then have that micro perf so you don't have the edges on a spiral. Oh, I just bought one of those. It's a, it, for my, for my hundred day. And I didn't realize that it, it has that. And that's, yeah. I thought, oh, that's great. Except that you're cheating if you pick something out of your sketchbook. Well, that is true. <laughs> I guess it is kind of cheaty, but I also, because every once in a while, if I have a sketchbook, then I'm like, oh, I just wrote a note about a blog or something. And then I, want it out of there okay uh snack choice uh sweet or salty salty okay yeah me too i could go headlong into doritos in a heartbeat oh okay, cheetos here's, here's my final caffeinated question um yep. if you weren't an artist like that's off the table what would you be archaeologist oh isn't that interesting i love his i love history History is mostly what I read. I'm a history buff. When I'm having my lunch, I go to the biblical archaeology review page and read about what they've been excavating over, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. So if, you know, if this art gig doesn't work out, there's always archaeology school. <sighs> oh, my gosh. Well, Martha, I just want to thank you so much. I know we had some hiccups getting to this place, but here we are, <laughs> adorable as always. And I thank you so much for this great information you've given to the people that are watching. 
and um, we will be posting this on Facebook and on YouTube. And if you guys have any questions for either of us, just pop I'll answer. There and we will try to answer them as quickly as possible. Wait, I, what? I have one more question. Yes, <laughs> I raise my hand. I'm always raising my hand. <laughs> yes, raising my yes, hand to my yes, students. Teacher. Go, Martha, get out of here. Yeah. My, I, I just realized I had one more thing to say. Oh, good. Um, oh, do. And this is something that I've had to learn and relearn. The business changes, life changes. So what I pray for is flexibility. I'm flexible so that I can move from this to this. I can make the changes I need to make. And, and if I don't know what they should be yet, I'll just move in a direction and trust that it's going to take me where I need to go. Um, and I don't know where I'm going right now. I mean, I'm, I'm sort of in this, this limbo -y place psychologically, but I trust that it'll lead me to some place I wouldn't get to if I wasn't willing to take a risk. And oh. I'm risking now. Wow, that is, that is lovely. I, that, I'm that, that was worth you raising your hand for. for sure. That is <laughs> and, a beautiful thing. And yes. one more, <laughs> don't, put all, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and um, I love what I do. I absolutely get up in the morning and I love what I do. I work all the time. Everybody knows it. Um, I love, but I love it. And so I wouldn't do anything else. And I don't care if I can't retire as long as I keep my health and I can work and not be drawing right into the grave. I know, I know. But you know, even though people say, well, I would, I would do this for free. No, I um, would like, no, I would do some things for free, like paint, but I would oh. not, but I still want to sell those, but I would not. I mean, we just love, I mean, I love trading my, art for money i think that's a great way to spend time effort time. oh yeah but, I, mean, but I really not... do think that it is so wonderful when you do love what you do but it is still oh. a job it is still a commercial product it's and a so it's what you should not undercut that either the the, the french photographer henri something for song he had this saying about his work he said it's a hard pleasure ah my work is a hard pleasure yeah well, thank you so much for that. I, I'll tell you that the idea that, like, when people say, I, I, I hope I'm successful, I hope this is really, you know, makes it big or whatever, but the idea that flexibility, yeah. I mean, that to me, that's what sustains you. That is what that is what, you that is what I mean, we're supposed to be flexible in our bodies so that we live to be 110, we can still paint. And so, but I do, yeah, and so, but I do think that that flexibility in how you view what is to come, which we cannot predict, is a beautiful no. quality to to keep in front of mind for sure. It's the it's it's my insurance. It's that I I trust myself, um, and I don't always know which where to go. But I I tell my students and myself always just always even if you can only move forward incrementally, you know, a little bit a day, you're always moving forward. You're not looking back. You're not staying still because the staying still to me is going backward you're moving forward sometimes in leaps and bounds sometimes just incrementally but it's psychologically what you have to you just that's what I protect is my optimism oh that is beautiful I thank you so much for that you're welcome. and um thanks everybody for being here and we will be here answer some questions <laughs> we'll, we'll answer questions. questions so thank you so much you're appreciate welcome. it bye everybody bye